This video tutorial from ExoCAD shows how to design a, a removable partial denture with visualization teeth, metal backings, and a metal dummy using ExoCAD's partial CAD module. Start by running the Dental DB application. Select a client from the drop down menu or add a new one by clicking on the three dots. Enter the patient name or case number. A technician may be entered as well, but it is not mandatory. Next, choose the teeth that the partial will be replacing. If you do not see the partial framework choice in the job definition, choose a different configuration preset that includes support for the partial framework. Choose the partial setting located below options in the material configuration. If you are working on a station that is mainly used for designing partials, this can be set as a default. For a visualization tooth, choose Partial Framework. There are four material options for partials, each with unique default settings. Use the hotkey control to duplicate the properties to the next tooth with the same restoration type. Next, for a metal backing, choose Reduced Pontic. Again, use the hotkey control to duplicate the restoration type. For a metal dummy, choose Anatomic Pontic. Other restoration types can be chosen here as well. For example, if you are making a partial with telescopic crowns, you would choose Coping. Next, click the Save button. If you will be scanning a model, choose Scan in the Actions menu. For this example, we will load the sample case provided in the ExoCAD software. Choose Partial Sample, Upper Case with Metal Pontic and Lingual Backings. Next, choose Design from the Actions menu. If design of individual teeth is not required, you can skip designing in the CAD app and proceed directly to Partial Design. In this tutorial, a 3D mouse is used. If using a standard computer mouse, rotate the model by clicking and holding the right mouse button, then moving the mouse. To rotate on a single axis, click and hold the right mouse button on the outer perimeter of the screen. Click and hold both mouse buttons to pan the model. Use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. There are six preset views. The box located on the left side of the screen is a step-by-step -step guide called The Wizard. The title of the current step is located at the top of the box with the instructions just below. In the current step, place tooth models. Click the mesial contact point of tooth number 16. Then click the distal contact point. Hit the button Next in the Wizard menu. Repeat this process until anatomic shapes have been placed for each edentulous area. Please note that in the following steps, you can adjust the position of the teeth as well as freeform the anatomy. In this step, tooth placement, you are able to freely move the tooth models. Hold Ctrl and the left mouse button to rotate the tooth in all directions. Hold Shift and the left mouse button to scale the tooth. Hold only the left mouse button to move the tooth. In a separate tutorial, you can learn more about tooth placement and how to use the directional restrictions. Proceed to the next step. In the freeforming step, you can freeform and adapt the restorations to the jaw scan. Freeforming will be shown in a separate tutorial.
To adapt the lingual backings and metal dummies, select the Adapt tab. Here, click Adapt to Gingiva, then select Approximal, and click Cut Intersections. Hit Next. In this video, I will show you how to use the shrinking step to create lingual backings. First, choose the desired shrinking depth. Then check the box, Exclude Selected Parts. The brush size can be adjusted by holding Shift and using the mouse wheel. Paint the areas of the tooth that you do not want to shrink. Notice the brush turns red when the hotkey shift is held. This removes painted areas. Select Apply to shrink the Pontix, then hit Next to proceed to the next step. In the freeforming step, smooth out the facials of the Pontix. To delete material, hold Shift while dragging the freeforming tool. To smooth the material, hold both Shift and Control while moving the freeforming tool. You can learn more about the freeforming step in a separate video tutorial. Proceed to the next step to merge the restorations. Click Next. This will bring you back to the Dental DB application. Choose Design Partial in the Actions menu. Notice the restorations previously designed are transparent with the visualization teeth a grayish color and the all metal teeth of a purple hue. In partial design, the wizard is located along the bottom of the screen with the name of the current step in the left corner and the instructions for the step at the bottom of the menu. In the first step, survey model, position your model so you are looking at the occlusal surface. To view the key for the undercut color mapping, click on the settings option. Move the model to adjust the undercut. Tip the model forward to increase the mesial undercut. Tip the model backward to increase the distal undercut. Click Set from View to set the insertion direction and to see the undercut changes. Use the hotkeys F6 through F8 to change the perspective in the alternate view window. The draft angle can be changed by using the arrows or typing in the value. Clicking Apply can be skipped as hitting Next will automatically apply the survey wax. Begin the Edit Blockout step by removing the wax where the clasp tips will be placed by clicking and holding down the left mouse button while moving the tool over the blockout wax. In this example, ring clasp will be placed on the molars and acres clasp on the premolars. The tool size can be adjusted by holding down the hotkey Shift and movement of your mouse scroll wheel. Furthermore, you can change the area of influence and the wax hardness by using the appropriate sliders in the wizard. To undo a previous action, use the hotkey Ctrl and Z. Adding palatal relief or softening sharp angles may be desired. To apply additional blockout wax, choose Smooth in the wizard menu and the Additive Smooth option. The tool size can be adjusted by holding down the hotkey Shift and movement of your mouse scroll wheel. Likewise, the strength of the wax flow is adjusted by holding down Control and using the mouse scroll wheel. You can find a complete list of hotkeys in the ExoCAD wiki. Model imperfections or holes can be filled here as well. Click Next.
Use your draw tool to outline where the major connector and mesh will be placed. Now draw the major connector curve. Alternately, you can start by drawing the mesh retention curve. The order in which you draw the lines does not matter. Note that you can correct a point's position directly by clicking and holding on the point while you are drawing the curve. Alternately, you can edit the entire curve or replace segments later. Finish the line by double clicking. For an upper design, be sure to have a closed line for the major connector. Overlap the mesh and major connector spline. If the major connector curve and the retention curve intersect, both parts can be created in one step later. Tissue stops may be drawn as well. To change an existing line, select Edit Curve, then choose the line. Click and drag the control points. To delete a control point, click and hold the left mouse button and tap the right mouse button. For an anterior posterior strap, draw an enclosed line within your major connector. To undo a previous action, use the hotkey Ctrl and Z. Flags will appear labeling the parts drawn as well as a preview of the mesh. To alter the orientation of the mesh, Click and drag the middle control point. Click the center of the retention mesh and hold the left mouse button to drag the mesh and drag the arrow at the end to adjust the whole size. Values can also be changed in the settings menu along with other mesh and major connector options such as mesh shape, mesh relief thickness, and major connector texture. Click Next to proceed to the Draw Clasp step. At any point in the design, the anatomic shapes of the tooth models can be hidden by unchecking the box next to Imported Parts in the Show and Hide menu. Again, using the Draw tool, draw a line where the center of the clasp will be placed, working from one clasp end to the other. Double click to complete a line. A clasp requires an open line. Don't be overly critical when drawing the curve. The placement and the shape of the clasp can be changed when creating the clasp in the next step. Here also, you can correct a point's position directly by clicking and holding the point while you are drawing the curve. Now, click Next to proceed to the next step and apply the clasps. Select the molar ring clasp line. Under Profiles, choose Ring. To change the clasp placement, 
Move the control points. To adjust the parameters of the clasp, select the Settings option. Click Apply. Select the other molar ring clasp, repeating the process and clicking Apply before working on the next clasp. Click on the premolar clasp line, then change the clasp profile to premolar. The width of each clasp end can be adjusted independently in the settings menu. repeating the process and clicking Apply before working on the next clasp. Proceed to the next step. Using the Clone tool adds a precise amount of wax to the surface of the refractory model. Each preset in the wizard menu has its own default value and hotkey. Change your view so you are looking at the surface the measurement is to be based from. Wax all rests and minor connectors. To undo a previous action, use the hotkey Ctrl and Z. Proceed to the next step. Draw a spline for the border of each finish line. Continue to the next step. Adjust the lines as needed. If desired, use the extended control handles to change the angle of the finish lines.
For additional options, expand the Profile menu to view Finish Line presets. You may also create your own profile by clicking on the 2D Cut View image. Adjust the lines of the image to make a unique profile. Click Save As and name your profile. Click OK, then Done. On future partial projects, you can choose your finish line design from the profile menu. Proceed to the next step. In this step, add parts. The backings and dummy will be added to the partial. Choose Settings. There are three options for importing parts. Reference, Non-Editable, and Editable. Reference is just as you see here, a transparent shape for you to use as an aid when necessary, such as placing posts, mesh, or finish lines. Non-editable parts merge after the rest of the design is complete. This happens in the Save for Build step. You will not be able to freeform the restoration if this option is chosen. It should also be considered that the parts will retain their original shape and triangulation density that was created in the CAD application. The parts will not be auto-cropped with the refractory model. This is the recommended choice if you will be merging crowns with the partial. Editable is best if you need to smooth intersection areas or do any further waxing to the anatomic shape such as adding beads or slots for processed teeth. These parts will be auto-cropped to the refractory and the triangulation output is reduced. This option is not recommended for merging the partial with crowns. For this tutorial, beads will be added to the metal backings. Therefore, the editable option will be chosen. Choose the tooth to import, select editable, then convert to wax. Repeat this process for all the teeth you wish to convert to wax. Proceed to the next step. The Edit Wax or freeform step is where smoothing and fine tuning are done. Four waxing methods are available melting, smoothing, additive smoothing, and subtractive smoothing. To finesse the underside of the partial, check the box Hide Blockout and Refractory. This is a great tool for smoothing the base of uprights, lingual plates, and interproximal areas. Proceed to the next step. If necessary, draw support bars by clicking on two points on the wax up. This step can be skipped by clicking on the next button. Click next. Click next again to apply. In this example, beads, post, and embossing will be added. To access these options, enter into expert mode on the right hand side of the screen. Select the draw tool and circle the area where bead coverage is desired.
choose Retention Beads, then select the curve drawn. If necessary, make changes to the bead size, bead density, and undercut. Select Apply. Repeat the process on the other tooth. To add a post, select Add Post Tool. Click on the model to place the post. Move the position of the post by clicking and dragging the bottom control point. Change the angle of the post with the top point. The thickness and length values can be altered in the bottom menu. Select Apply. Text or images can be embossed by choosing the embossing option. Patient names, case numbers, and logos can be added. My partials are stamped with my unique signature. Embossing material can be added or subtracted. Leave the expert mode by clicking on Wizard and proceed to the last step. Before you export the partial, adjust the settings according to the manufacturing requirement. Your milling center's support may help you. The triangulation tolerance, auto relief, and the orientation can be adjusted if desired. Also in the settings, you can adjust the parameters for scaling, dynamic relief, and static relief. For more information on these parameters, please visit the ExoCAD Wiki. To save your design as an STL, click on Save for Build. Saving for Build will take a bit longer than you are seeing here. I've accelerated the process for this video. When visualizing the final output, the software will use a different rendering mode called Flat Shading that allows you to see triangulation exactly as it is written in the output file instead of a smooth visualization. Triangle size is affected by the tolerance setting. Choose a lower tolerance to increase the resolution. Lowering the tolerance values leads to a much larger output file and possibly longer processing times during the production. Click Next to close the software and save the scene file. Thank you for watching this video.